Rosemary, RB Films was formed in 1991 with you and some partners. Can you tell us yeah. about how that came about and why? Yeah, well, the CV I sent you said that we all came together in 1991, but the reality is, is that I got offered a crowded house film clip and it was worth a whole lot of money. And I ran off to Anthony Anderson, who ended up being the producer of Somersault many years later. And he said, and I said, what am I going to do? And he said, you need to start a company. I said, what am I going to call it? And he goes, well, your husband's name's Ben. <laughs> call it, and your name's Blight. Call it RB Films. So we actually started RB Films as a way to safeguard ourselves. Because what I'd been doing is doing music videos in the back room of the house. And I'd just been putting it into my bank account, <laughs> to be honest. That was in 1991. So for a good few years before then, that's what I was doing. So that is not great. Anyone would know that. It's not really good for tax and things. So I started this company and I did it. I, I you know, made lots of clips and I learned a lot about music videos through that process and really just ran it by myself in the back room. Then, um, and I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you go on, but that's sort of really how our beat film started. So it was really just the two of us in the beginning. How we all came together as four was that I'd been doing clips for a long time. I really wanted to get back into film, which is how I'd been trained. I went to Macquarie University in the 80s, and I, I really wanted to go back to what I'd been doing. And it was actually a friend of mine. She said, you know, Rosemary, she was Chilean, you know what you've got to do? You've just got to go, and you've got to get that film. You've got to do it. I went, okay, okay. So I actually did a, um, I, um, I found a film called Mary, which is on a, on a female saint called Mary McKillop. And I just loved her strength and it wasn't the religion, it was just the passion behind it. And that was really, I think that was a real key for RB Films. Um, in that scenario, I was, um, as I was financing that, I got pregnant and I, and I was working as a publicist part-time. RB Films, I, as to make money, I do publicity. And I was a publicist on Pat Fisk, who's a fantastic documentary filmmaker. I was a publicist for her Fred Hollows film. And I was climbing up ladders at Town Hall, these ladders where I had to get to the very top of Town Hall and hang banners and get food and feed 500 people, a bit like Fred Hollows did, you know, and feed the masses and do their eyes as well. And um, my husband went, well, look, there's this girl. And it was actually... Ray Lawrence's daughter's best friend. <laughs> it was all connected. And he goes, oh, this girl, her name's Carly. She, she's available. And she came in, and within a week, this woman had the entire, and by this time we'd been to this tiny office, this entire office full of yogurts and cheeses and all this stuff that she'd got so we could feed the masses at Fred Hollows. And that started the beginning of an incredibly important relationship. She's, Carly Dufresne is... No, she's going to kill me. I can't really... She's much younger than me. <laughs> I don't know how many years. But a good 10, 12 years younger. And so she was 18. It was one of her... It was, she'd just left school. She'd done a bit, you know, a couple of months in an advertising company. We just got on. It was just this thing, and that's what I found. It was just this thing that worked. So um, for a number of years, she worked with us, and she worked as my assistant, which is funny, because I didn't know a lot either. We made Mary together. We, we made half hours. We did documentaries. We did half hour dramas. We did all this different stuff together. And then I had another friend, and this is all about friends, isn't it, that I grew up with called Cass O'Connor. And Cass O'Connor is a major investor type person in, in Sydney and in the world. She's an incredibly dynamic woman. And she said, look, Rose, you look like you're doing it really hard. What do you need? And I went, well, it'd be really good if I had some money to help put some money into scripts or whatever. And so she invested in RB Films. So at that time that she did that, which was about 1995, 96, we went, okay, let's make Kylie a partner. Cass bought into the company and we became a proper company. So this was post-Mary. It was post in the winter dark, which was 90, yeah, so it's 96, 97, Kylie and Cass joined officially. Um, and it was, it's a, it was a fantastic thing. So every, we are, RB Films has always been very, very family. Um, and I think it's been one of the reasons why I've actually sustained this long. Did that moment also throw up a plan of any kind? Or did you have to articulate yeah. the plan to, to your partners? Um, <laughs> For Kylie and I, because it was really Kylie and I, Ben, at this stage, was still working as a financial controller on TV shows, and he'd work all day on these TV shows, and at night he'd come into our production accounts. <laughs> so it was very... Cass was off 
doing, you know, buying and selling major airlines and gold mines <laughs> and giving supportive vote, you know, coming to premieres. And Kylie and I just sort of stuck together and what do we have to do? We always had faith that we'd be looked after. So just as we were going broke, something would happen for us. So we didn't have a plan except that we wanted to, we always wanted to make feature films. We wanted to work with talent that we worked with again and again. So if the, the, they were the director that would work on a half hour, we wanted to do a feature film. We were always a great believer in writers and, want, and we loved scripts and wanted to work on those scripts. So we were, and we, we were both believers in that a script had to be ready. So we always felt that these, that we, it, it, we would lose relationships because we both wanted to say, it's not ready, it's not ready. So if there was any plan, it was, let's make us, let's come across as a quality team. Let's be the, let's be a team that people look at as people who are, who are talent, who are director, writer friendly and can produce quality work, whether that is five minutes, 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And Kylie went, what she did was, while we were developing feature films, she did a, a seven minute film, a 10 minute film, a 20 minute film, and she developed as a producer and moved very rapidly from my assistant to a partner. When she became a partner, I lost probably the best assistant anyone in the world could have. <laughs> uh, did you ask her to find a replacement for herself? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't actually, and it took me a long time <laughs> to find one, believe me, and now she's off wanting to be a producer, so that's one of the policies, you want to work with me. No ambition. Um, <laughs> no. But it, look, it really wasn't as, it really wasn't until, we never wrote a business plan. We've never, we never, I'll, I'll be honest, we never contracted. There was no agreement between Kylie and us, Ben and I, or Cass. There's never any agreement. It was, it was all on a belief and trust in each other. Now, people think that's start raving mad, and it probably is. I have heard other companies um, that I respect, and I'm sure you'll be interviewing one of them who will probably tell you the same thing. Um, it has, to this very day, it served us well. We have since written business plans, which I can tell you about. Yeah. Okay, before you tell us about those yeah. business plans, can you say beyond what you've said about wanting to be seen as producers of quality mm. material, can you say how that decision is to make it, I mean it's a, it's, a, it's a subjective decision, but is there anything else in that uh, equation? Is there any kind of uh, outline of what kind of quality material. I mean, there's so many different... Yeah. It's so subjective, isn't it, what quality is. And it's... A script can come... A script would come to you, can come to your door and I can fall in love with it or Kylie will fall in love with it or now Ben or indeed Cass and other partners we have will fall in love with the script. The next thing is identifying that the the writer can get to the next stage with that script and we can give them the support. And often to me, and I, I'm not very businesslike about this, I really, really need that, that connection. I need to be able to sit down and get excited and inspired and feel like I can facilitate or enable that person to go to the next stage. And to me that, that, that is part of the quality. I personally, I, that, I think I can do that. I think I can enable people. I can enable talented individuals to go to the next stage, but they've got to be the sort of people who want you to do that. So that is part, I can add quality to that, but I need them to want that. So does that make sense? Yes, yes. so yeah. what, what happens if one of you f falls in love with the script and it's only you that's fallen in love with the script and your partners haven't? You know what, it's really happened really rarely. Really, really rarely in RB Films have we read a script and not fall in love with it equally. Um, we find that it's really difficult. Like we, we sort of work together, you know, and there's a lot of, you know, there's people who've got producer credits and there's people who haven't and really everyone should have a producer credit on most things we've done because, you know, Kylie will do some development, you know, she will participate in development or something or Ben will, you know, creatively restructure a budget more times than you can think of. And that all adds into how you can facilitate a vision of a director or a writer. Um, and we just have, you know, we're just lucky. We're really like, there is, I think, you know, a bless. It's like finding a good marriage, I suppose. Mm. I found a good marriage. I'm really, and it, that is why we're, we're where we are now. We don't battle, there isn't, that we don't battle over place in the world or place. And that's interesting and that later that I can talk about what it's like, you know, 
Kali joined us at 18, you know, 15 years later, mm. she obviously has different ambitions. So it's interesting to work as a company with those now different agendas.